If you'd like to make your NFL games a little more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast presented by the glorious DraftKings Sportsbook app. I'm Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years, a whole bunch of podcasts that you guys should check out. Emory Hunt is on fire on the College Draft Podcast, betting college football games against the spread. If you like betting on Saturday action, you need to be listening to the College Draft Podcast. I do the Ross Tucker Football Podcast every day, 30 minutes or less, making sure you're up to date on all the news and notes around the NFL from a former player's perspective. Great guests like Andrew Brandt, Greg Cosell. Fantasy Feast Podcast with Joe Dolan is stellar to make sure you are ready to set your lineups, whether it's season long or DFS. And Andrew Brandt's Business of Sports podcast, really cool. If you haven't had a chance to check that out, you absolutely should. The star of this show, it's Steve Fezzik, at Fezzik Sports on social media. The only, say it with me, two-time winner of the Super Bowl, a professional football gambling, the Super Contest at the Westgate out there in Vegas. A lot of Vegas news, by the way, the last couple weeks with Henry Ruggs as well as Damon Arnett. I guess I want to start with that, Steve. He's at Fezzik Sports. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. And you can always watch if you'd like, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Or if you want to make sure you have all of our picks in black and white, sign up to become a patron, patreon.com slash RT Media. Steve, First rugs, now Arnett. Are you buying into the notion that it's harder to have a successful team and keep young guys out of trouble in Vegas than other cities? Absolutely. How can it not be? I mean, it's, there's just so many distractions. I'll tell a story about myself, Ross. I'm leaving the club. I've had a few drinks. I'm below the limit. I'm confident. Um, this was like 14 years ago. I'm backing out. Boom. Back in the parking lot, back into a car, just hardly any damage. Dude is right there also. The club's closing. He recognizes me. And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, this could be a disaster. He says, no, I really like your stuff. We just exchanged numbers. No problem. Doesn't call the police or anything. But, you know, that's um, that's the town we live in. That's not abnormal, unfortunately. And it's a big distraction. Yeah, uh, although I, I said this on the Ross Tucker podcast today. I don't know what Vegas has to do with Damon Arnett posting a social media video with a gun saying he wants to kill somebody. I mean, I don't that that doesn't seem to have anything to do with Vegas. Although I read somewhere where he crashed four rental cars in the first month he was there. I mean, how is that not a gigantic red flag? I, I uh, I'm, I'm amazed that that didn't get out or that he hasn't had other issues. Maybe he has. We had some issues this past week, Steve, unfortunately. Not a great week for us. I was down two units. You were down five, which puts me for the year back in the red. I'm now down one unit for the year. You're still up 19 units with that great start. And for me, Steve, it started on Thursday night extremely frustrating Jets Colts I was getting 10 and a half I got the better of the number Steve Colts score Mike White bing bang boom right down the field touchdown seven seven I'm like okay sweet he is pretty good my this is gonna be a good bet he gets hurt he, he got hurt on that touchdown drive Steve didn't play again they should give you your money back if the quarterback gets hurt Steve that's my story I'm sticking with it <laughs> I'm trying to think the only uh, insurance I guess you have is an MLB when you list your pitcher and he's got to not break his foot before the game starts. Once it starts, sorry, Ross. Um, it is, you know, you would think it would be safe to bet on the jets because none of their players should be worth anything to the point spread, but Mike White certainly was. Yeah. So that, I, I lost two big units there. Got off to a really bad start to the week. Bill's Jags. I lean to the Bills laying the 14. They lost outright. I mean, Steve, it was it was underdog Sunday, underdog week in the NFL. Terrible performance by the Bills. 
Broncos, Cowboys. Cowboys were my survivor pick because I'd already used the Bills, some of these other teams. So I'm out of my survivor league. I leaned Cowboys. You didn't have anything there. Ravens, Vikings. We both leaned to the Ravens. They end up winning the game, but they did not cover the spread. Yeah, and I want to comment on Survivor. So I'm seeing all these social media experts. They're talking about, like, the Circus Survivor is the biggest one in town here. There were 4,000 entrants, and last year there were 35 people that made it all the way through. This year there's a double week in Thanksgiving. That was the case last year, and a double week in Christmas. So you got to pick 20 winners. And all these experts are predicting 100-plus winners. From the start, I projected about 16 winners and now I'm down to where I think it's going to be less than 10. It's hard, Ross, just to pick one winner. When you got to pick 20 straight winners, even if you get it right 70%, take 0.7 to the 20th. That's like taking 0.5 to the 10th, and that's like um, 1,000 to one shot. So if that's the case, even if you have 4,000 entries, only four people are going to wind up winning. Interesting. Um well, that's why you're here, Steve. You always know the math. I like it. Um, I don't like that I'm out of that Survivor League. I've yet to win that. And I'm like the only so-called expert in it. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, you pick a big favorite. Everybody does. And you don't know. It's like, who knew the Broncos would be up 30 to nothing on the Cowboys? Literally nobody. So don't act like you knew it. Panthers, Patriots. We both like the Panthers getting the points. Just to lean. Patriots blew them out 24 to 6. Sam Darnold confirmed not good. Falcons, Saints. Eileen Falcons getting the six points. They covered. Then we get to Browns, Bengals. Eileen Browns getting three. You took the Browns, Steve, two units. They destroyed the Bengals. You were all over that one. Yeah, dog pound and a good bounce back spot. And this was a case where the Bengals had been a little bit better than Cleveland year to date, but expectations were so much higher for Cleveland. And we still have to factor that into our power ratings. And bottom line, Browns are the better team. Texans, Dolphins. I had uh, the Dolphins paired with the Steelers in a, a two team, two unit teaser. They were both laying six and a half. So I took them down to minus a half point. They just had to win. Dolphins get it done 17-9, to nine, even though it comes out an hour and a half before the game that two is not going to start, but he's still the backup. Don't even get me started. And then the Steelers hung on last night. So that was two units for me on that teaser. That was clutch. You leaned to the Dolphins. That came through for you, Steve. Raiders, Giants. I leaned Raiders. They lose outright, 23-16, not good at all. Then we get to the Eagles and the Chargers. Eagles were another teaser leg for me I felt pretty good about. They were getting one and a half. I teased them up to uh, seven and a half. They lose by three. So that teaser leg came through, Steve, for both of us. And then you get to Packers Chiefs. Very curious. Chiefs won 13-7. Now that you've seen him play a game, where are you rating Jordan Love, Steve? Yeah, so Jordan Love's at the very bottom of my quarterback rankings. He was terrible. He was just absolutely terrible, could not adjust to anything different that the defenses threw at him. And the big winner of the weekend, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers had the best weekend of anybody, Ross. Well, Maybe Sunday. I don't know that Friday or Friday night went all that great for him after his uh, <laughs> after his interview. Um, yeah, it was not good. You know what else is not good? Not going, not knowing what's going on with your car, Steve. I mean, you mentioned your car and the accident you got on with the free Fix Finder service at AutoZone. You can troubleshoot more dashboard lights, including your check engine light, ABS light, and service interval light. The free Fix Finder will give you possible solutions for your lights, all backed by verified technicians. It'll even send you your full results in a detailed fix finder report straight to your email. So you'll have all the information you need to take on the fix. And if you need a bit of help from a repair shop, AutoZone will even refer you to a nearby shop that you can trust. It's the most complete free warning light report backed by technician verified fixes 
and you can only find it at AutoZone. So next time your dashboard lights pay you a visit, just get in the zone. AutoZone. Uh, then we had Cardinals Niners. Steve, you put two units on the Niners. It was a pick at the time. You got the better of the number because the Niners ended up being favored by a couple points. You were right. Kyler Murray didn't play. DeAndre Hopkins didn't play. Steve, it didn't matter. They got blown out by the Cardinals. You know, and, and for my own personal service, I got destroyed on this game, Ross. I gave my client San Francisco. I said, wheel San Francisco into multiple teasers as well. I love the Niners. This was back when they were catching, you know, a couple points and everything lost. San Francisco lost straight up. They lost with the points. They lost on the teaser, despite the fact it closed minus five and a half. And I told my clients, I said, you know what? If you can't handle the fluctuations of betting, I, I do it again. I, I know that the Niners were lousy, but if I can bet a minus five and a half team at pick them or better, I'm going to go all in and make that my biggest bet of the week. Absolutely impossible to win, given that um, you identified that move. So impossible to win last week. So be it. Titans, Rams. You and I had the Rams in a, in a few uh, teasers. Steve, you had them in three teasers. I had them. I had, uh, by the way, I had the Packers as a teaser leg as well. So the Eagles and Packers came through for me. So just for accounting purposes, Dolphins, Steelers, two units, that cashed. Eagles, Packers, Packers teased up to seven and a half, that cashed. It was the Rams, Steve. It was the Rams that got us. I went down uh, minus one and a half um, for the, we did on a best bet and paired it with the Packers, paired it with the Eagles. Matthew Stafford and the, and the Rams O-line screwed us. You even did a three-unit teaser with the Rams and the Cowboys. So you lost seven units on teasers on this show, Steve. You had a no. terrible teaser day. A seven and a half point or larger favorite had not lost all year long through week seven of the NFL. I I have to say these uh, these big dogs they've um, they've corrected that nicely in the last few weeks with uh, so many large upsets here, um, including of course Jacksonville being the biggest. Yeah, so I, let me correct myself. You were down five units because you were in with me on the Eagles Packers. You're down five units on teasers, and then Bears Steelers. Steelers made me sweat it out, but they got the win last night on Monday Night Football. If you're ever looking for another free place to get some uh, betting information, PicksWise is the number one free app for football picks, odds, and analysis. Find expert picks for every game all season long. Loaded with best bets, props, and parlays, you can find in-depth game predictions giving you the who, how, and why behind every prediction. It's all for free. Found your pick? Search our latest DraftKings promotions to sign up for an account and place your bet. Download the free PicksWise app now to make your next bet better. PicksWise backs responsible gambling. Gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. We move on, Steve. We move forward. That's what you do. You keep shooting. Let's get to week number – is it 10? Wow. Week number 10 in the NFL – it starts Thursday night. I will be there. It's uh, calling the game for Westwood one with I and Eagle. It is the Dolphins hosting the Ravens. The Ravens are laying seven and a half. Excellent. So since you're calling the game, Ross, can you let me know who's going to get the football first so I can get my last second prop bets in like team to score first, first quarter, third quarter, instead of waiting for the camera to pan last second to the kickoff. Is that a memo that they send tell you, you announcers that we're, you're not allowed to tell us who's going to get the ball? No, I never heard that. No it's one just, tells we're me. Coming, we're usually coming back from a break and then there's the kickoff. It's like, you know, there's always a break right before the kickoff. Now you talk about the media food for 30 seconds and, and then the, the cameras pan and the kick is in the air instead of telling me who gets the damn ball. Okay. I digress. Um, and I love your food updates, by the way. Those are, but that, I love that. <laughs> Baltimore laying seven and a half. Obvious teaser. I'm gonna lay. I'm gonna. I am gonna play teasers with Baltimore. I'm gonna play six and a half point teasers because there's two other nine point favorites that I want to get down to my six and a half. So Baltimore with Dallas 
Two-team teaser. We'll take Baltimore down to minus one. Dallas down to minus two and a half. I will also play Baltimore, and I will play them with the Pittsburgh Steelers in a two-team six-and-a-half-point teaser. And then my third teaser will be Dallas and Pittsburgh. I am wheeling those three teams in two-team teasers. Okay. I, I am teasing the Ravens down from minus seven and a half to minus one and a half, six point teaser. Um, And I'm going to pair it with the Saints who are currently getting, uh, that line just moved to three. It was two and a half earlier. Uh, I'll pair them with the Vikings who are getting two and a half. I'm going to tease them up to eight and a half. So two units on the two teams that played each other. Ravens down the... One and a half Vikings up to eight and a half, two units, two team teaser for me. There, um, I, I would be surprised if the Ravens lost to the Dolphins, they find a way to win more often than not. How about the Bucks, Steve? Laying nine and a half at Washington, yeah, very interesting. I, I think back to the playoff game these two teams played and how Washington hung in in that game. However, I think it's a good spot for Tampa. Off their bye, off of a loss against the Saints, I expect a very motivated post bye team. I'll pass the game. Yeah, I got nothing here. Totals 51 and a half. I would lean Tampa laying the nine and a half to come off the bye and the loss and play well, but I, I don't like laying that many points in the NFL. Speaking of that, the Bills are laying 13 at the Jets, Steve. So. When we look at a 13-point spread, we think about complacency and the team going through the motions. But as bad as Buffalo was last week, you got to feel they're going to bring it this week. A lean to the minus 13. Uh, I hate myself for doing this. I hate myself for doing this. Looks like Mike White's going to start. The Bills are in a funk. Putting one unit on the Jets. Getting 13 points. Only one unit. I hate the Jets. I, I, I never do well with the Jets. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. Let's get to the Falcons and the Cowboys. The Falcons are getting nine points right now, Steve. Cowboys laying nine. And you tease them down six and a half points to two and a half, right? Yes. You got to get it down to minus two and a half. You can't tease them into three. Not to mention some books have wacky rules where ties lose now on teasers. So check the rules at your individual book. But the bottom line is get them down to minus two and a half. You know, a pro secret, a lot of viewers are saying, well, Fez, I want to hear what your thoughts are against the spread, not these teasers. Well, pros don't, when a, a team is laying eight or nine, they either tease that team down if they're taking the favorite or they pass. Pros know that that's the superior mathematical bet. That's why we're playing so many teasers. That's why we win on the Ross Tucker Even Money podcast, because we make optimal bets. So what are the odds? So I know, because we get emails about this every once in a while. Most bets are minus 110. I know when we do the two-unit, six-team teasers, those are minus 120. When you do six and a half points or seven, what are those usually? Minus 125, minus 130? Minus 130 and minus 140. So you are paying a whole bunch of VIG. But the math, Ross, is that you when you capture that corridor of six points that are between three and seven, those outcomes land about 25% of the time. So you're basically turning a 50% bet into a 75% bet on that team because think how often it happens. Look at Pittsburgh last night um, that these um, favorites by about seven – you know, win by small margins. So here's the deal with this game. The Falcons haven't, ha have been very consistent ever since that first game. I mean, they've been right there in every game after that. They've won a bunch of them. Uh, when they've lost, they've been there. I'm going to show, I don't love the number. I wish it was 10 and a half, obviously, but I'm going to show some faith in Matt Ryan and the guys. I'm going to take the Falcons plus nine. I'm only going to put one unit on it, though. Falcons plus nine, one unit. Let's get to the Browns and the Patriots. Right now, the Browns are catching a point, and the total's 45, Steve. So what's interesting about this one, 
is I thought the Patriots had a chance to be minus three in this game. I'm really surprised that it's this low. I have New England and Cleveland being pretty close to comparable teams. If not Cleveland, just a smidge better with Baker Mayfield injured. I'm going to take New England. New England, two units here. I think the Patriots are gelling. They weren't as good in September. I do think they're going to be a playoff team. New England wins this game, two units. Got it. Um, I would probably just lean Cleveland there. I think Cleveland's the better team. I think they were awesome against the Bengals. Uh, but New England's playing pretty darn well as well. So that's just a lean to Cleveland for me. The Lions are playing in Pittsburgh. Steelers played last night. Lions coming off the bye. Lions getting nine points, Steve, just like the Falcons spread. So I'm teasing Pittsburgh, but at the spread of nine, I actually would lean Lions. You know, there's a long-term trend that makes sense. Winless team off of a bye. You guys suck. That's what the Lions are going to hear for 14 straight days. So off of a bad effort before their bye, you got to expect that Detroit is going to certainly bring it in this game, but they're no good. They're just not any good. And I can see Pittsburgh winning this game by seven points. Yeah, I, I like the Lions. I feel like I've lost a decent amount of money on the Lions, the Jets, and the Jags this year. It's like they only show up when I don't pick them. But I'm showing faith in the Lions again. The Steelers just don't feel like they could put teams away. I'm putting two units on the Lions with the nine points. Um, the total in that game is 43 and a half. Two units Detroit getting the nine points. How about the Jags and the Colts? The Colts are laying 10 after the Jags just beat the Bills, Steve. I've seen this movie before, Ross, where the crappy team – somehow play so far above their heads that their nose bleed for like a month. That would be the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're no good. The coach is no good. They don't like their coach. They got their win. And now they're going to a game here at Indy where Indy needs the game like blood still because they're still in the playoff hunt, hanging on by their fingernails. Indianapolis is going to crush this horrible Jacksonville team. I don't do this very often, but two units, I'll lay the 10. Indy. Wow. Yeah, I can't do that. Not. Uh, I think you're probably right, but it would just be a lean to Indy laying the 10 for me. The Saints, now they were going to be part of a teaser for me, but in the last hour, they went from getting two and a half to now they're getting three, Steve, which means money is coming in or sharps or whatever, coming in on the Titans. Titans are now up to minus three. The total is 44 and a half. I'm going to pass this game, but to everyone in the media – just stop with the Tennessee Titans are the best team in the NFL. The Tennessee Titans have played the best four games of any team in the NFL. The Titans aren't that good. The Titans don't have Derrick Henry. The Titans have an average defense, and they just had an incredible four straight games. The Titans are going to finish 11-6. and six. They're going to get their butt kicked in the first round of the playoffs, and let's celebrate what they did, but we're about – when we make power ratings, it's not about how good you were. It's how good you are today. And the fact they're only laying three against a New Orleans Saints team that's not very good is a telling sign. That's what I make the game I pass. Wow. Strong, Steve. Strong. Speaking of strong, overcoming the odds, rewriting the playbook, delivering under pressure, the MVPs of small business lead their teams to victory all year long. Visa is proud to provide playmakers everywhere with more tools to help grow their business and help them achieve even greater success. Because the more people we can empower, the more we all win. Visa, a network working for everyone. Um, I would lean to New Orleans there, getting the three points. I think they have a great chance to win that game. Carolina's playing Arizona. Carolina's getting nine and a half. Kind of like the spot for Carolina. The total is 44, but the starting quarterback for the Panthers is unknown. Well, I'm meeting with a friend of mine, dropping him off a package based upon the Arizona game last week. So let me just pass the Arizona games this week for that reason. Got it. Uh, I would lean Carolina getting the nine and a half there. How about the Vikings and the Chargers? I mentioned earlier, 
The Vikings are – they're like the Falcons to me. They have an unbelievable, uncanny ability to play every game as a close game. Chargers are good. They're not that good. I watched them against Philadelphia. I'll tease the Vikings up to eight and a half. Um, two units, parent with the Ravens down to one and a half. The total in the game is 52, but they're part of my two unit, two team teaser, Steve. What do you got? Yeah, so the Vikings have played seven close games year to date. They're two and five. They are excellent at losing close games, which makes them an excellent teaser candidate. So I too will tease Minnesota. You know, I'll tease them. I'll tease them with my Raiders. I'll tease the Raiders up to eight and a half as well. Two team, two unit teaser. Moving on to the Eagles and the Broncos. Broncos smashed the Cowboys. Eagles looked decent against the Chargers, but they lost. Like a lot of games this year, the Eagles are catching three. The total's 44 and a half. So let's think about this. Just two weeks ago, the Eagles were catching three on the opener against the Raiders. And I got bet down to pick them. All right, it lost. But the Eagles were catching three all the way to pick them. And now they're playing Denver. The Raiders are much better than Denver. Not a little bit better. They're much better than Denver. I get it. Denver had their hero game against Dallas. They're still not a very good team. The Eagles are the better team. Catching three. Home field's not worth close to three. It's an automatic take. Your Eagles, Ross Tucker, three units. Best bet of the week. Wow. That is strong, Steve. Um, I'm going to put two units on the Eagles. Um, I liked a lot of the things I saw from them, although the Broncos look good against the Cowboys, but it feels like this is the week where everybody's patting the Broncos on the bat for how they played against the Cowboys, and they crashed down to earth a little bit. So I'll put two units on the Eagles getting the three points. To me, that's a toss-up game out there in Denver, and for whatever reason, it feels like the Eagles play better on the road. Seahawks are in Green Bay. We think it'll be Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson put out a video. Aaron Rodgers gets off the COVID list Saturday. The Packers are laying four, Steve. The total is 49 and a half. I'd like to say my opinion on this game is completely immune to who quarterbacks the individual teams. However, it is not. I don't know if for certain Rodgers is going to play. I don't know how he's going to respond to not being able to practice until midnight of the night before. I don't know for sure that Russell Wilson is coming back. Will I bet this game? I don't know, Ross, but I'm passing for now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pass the game as well. Too much uncertainty. I guess I'd lean Seattle with Russell Wilson coming back, but uh, it's just a lean for me to Seattle. How about Sunday night football? It's the Raiders and the Chiefs. Chiefs are now laying two and a half. Raiders are getting two and a half. You know what, Steve? I didn't see this earlier. I'm 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 including the Chiefs, uh, the Raiders in my teaser. So I'm taking the Raiders. The, the Chiefs are not good. I'm taking the Raiders up to eight and a half. And I'm doing a round robin teaser with the Ravens and the Vikings. All three of those. Baltimore down to minus one and a half. Vikings up to eight and a half. Raiders up to eight and a half. Three teasers. You know how I do it. Hasn't really been that great for me, to be honest with you, but I'm going to keep firing because I believe in it. Raiders up to eight and a half as a teaser leg. Yeah, and so I previously did play the Raiders with the Vikings in a teaser, but you know what? I know the listeners want plays, Ross, and not just teasers. I get it. Vegas is completely distracted, but Vegas is as good as Kansas City right now. Kansas City, they're bad. If you look at Mahomes, his mechanics are all completely ruined. He didn't throw an interception last week. He could have thrown two or three. Something is completely amiss in terms of just his fundamentals. And that Kansas City offense, Tyreek Hill finally has a bad game. Kelsey is banged up. If they don't have those guys making spectacular, having spectacular games, they're in deep trouble. Raiders can win this game. Raiders plus two and a half, two units as well. Love it. It's the best bet, right? The best bet. All right, let's get to Monday night football. The Rams laying four against the Niners on the road. The total is 49. 
Excellent. So we have two teams that both cost me a boatload of money. The Rams absolutely, uh, I don't know what that was. Camp block for Stafford. Stafford's terrible. The irony of that, Ross, is literally right before that game started, I bet Matt Stafford at 6-1 to one to win the MVP. Big. So you could not have had a worse market timing on a guy to lay an egg in a game. And San Francisco, we documented about how much money those guys cost me. So I think I'm just going to research props and bet props in that game. I pass this game. Yeah, I, I guess I would lean San Francisco. It feels like they kind of have the Rams number at times. I, I don't know. I, I don't have a great feel for either one of these teams. It does feel like it's Jimmy G's last stand, but I don't know what that means because the Cardinals game was kind of his last stand as well. I guess I would just lean San Francisco, get in the four. That Rams O-line got worked, absolutely worked. That'll do it, by the way, for this week's Even Money podcast. Remember, become a patron so you can see all the bets on our private Slack channel, patreon.com slash RT Media. Follow him on social at Fezzik Sports. Follow me at Ross Tucker NFL. Follow us at Ross Tucker Pod or check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Good luck, everybody. Hope you guys win some money. Thanks for listening to the Even Money Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, the Fantasy Feast, Business of Sports, and the College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mention DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 109 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 